Have you been struggling to grow organically on Instagram? Don't worry, it's not just you. It's becoming more and more difficult to get that reach. However, it's still absolutely possible to grow without paid ads. Today, I'm sharing my top tips that if applied consistently are going to actually help you grow your Instagram account. Ready? Let's do this. Hi my lovely people, it's Natalia and welcome back to my channel where I share super action ideas on content creation for entrepreneurs and creatives. And today you're in for a treat because that's the video you've asked for. I'm here to share my tips on how to grow organically on Instagram and convert visitors into followers. And I know it's tough when you're just starting out, so I'm going to share a set of concepts and tips that should help you get traction if you apply them diligently and consistently. And let me include a bit of a forward here to say that with each year, it's tougher and tougher to get consistent organic growth because there are simply more creators on the app, which means more competition for people's attention. One thing you need to keep in mind on your journey is that it takes time and consistent commitment, so you definitely have to be invested in it to play for the long run. There's no such thing as an overnight IG success and what you may perceive as an ultra fast growth is usually the result of a long-term strategic approach that just paid off. That being said, it is still absolutely possible to grow organically now, so grab your notepads and let's talk about how to achieve it. Cracking the algorithm. The first thing I want to mention before we start with the tactics is that you need to understand how the Instagram algorithm works. And I hate to break it to you, but there's no one algorithm to rule them all on Instagram, and that's coming from the creators of the app directly. Instead, there's a variety of algorithms and processes serving different purposes. And what does that mean to you? It means that for different functions of Instagram, be it the feed, the explore page, the stories, or the reels, content is ranked differently depending on how different people use them. And the algorithms analyze such details as when a post was posted, what the content's about, who you are as a creator, how many times people have interacted with you, what specific people are interested in, and your personal history of interaction with them through comments or DMs, etc. There are nuances to the different parts of Instagram, but the thing you need to remember as a creator to understand the algorithm is this. Instagram pushes your content to the followers that engage with your content more regularly and then pushes it further depending on how likely it is to spark interaction among other users. So with that in mind, remember that throughout all these tips, our main goal should be to get people to interact in different ways with what you put out there. Let's go to tip number one, profile optimization. If there's one thing that's going to help attract the right followers, it's having your profile optimized to the fullest. And you may think, man, that's not a sexy piece of advice, but hear me out. That's your gateway to turning visitors into actual followers. When people get to your profile, whether from seeing your post randomly, from someone who shared it in their stories, from other platforms, they absolutely need to know why they should follow you. If your profile is not properly optimized, all they get is confusion, and if there's one thing you need to understand in business and in life too, is that a confused mind says no. And you can craft insightful captions, create engaging graphics, research your hashtags, but that's not going to amount to much if all they see is the post, maybe they like it, but they're not getting an answer to who you are and why they should follow you, they will not stay for longer. So what can we do to change it? Let's start with a profile picture, which will clearly show you or your brand logo. No vague, dark, indiscernible photos here, only clarity and preferably a face if you're a personal brand. The next bit, which is something many people get wrong, is your name, which is the bit of your bio that shows in bold like this here. Now, if it's the same as your IG handle, you're missing out on some key opportunities because there's unnecessary repetition and it should include some keywords because this part is actually searchable. There's a high chance that people are looking for a specific solution or niche rather than your name specifically, so be sure to include them there. For example, if you're a travel blogger, you should definitely have it in your name as a keyword because if I were to search for Travel Scotland because I'm planning a trip there or daydreaming about some majestic Scottish landscapes, I'd be more likely to find you this way, especially if some of the people I often interact with follow you or have some sort of a relation to you, be it in the form of frequent interactions as well. The next part is your actual bio, which should tell a clear story on what you do and what you talk about on your profile. You should definitely 
form it in a way that's going to really speak to your ideal audience and explain how they can benefit from following you. And this can be in the form of your mission statement like mine here, or by adding subjects you talk about. And you can also include a bit of social proof if you have some, but if not, that's nothing to worry about. What you do need to include, however, is your link and a strong call to action that directs your followers' attention to it. I definitely recommend you check out this video here to learn how to craft that perfect bio that attracts the right followers. And before you move on, don't forget to feature some highlights. Make sure to really showcase who you are, what you offer, and what you sell, and have fun there. Show your true personality. Now, on to tip number two, consistency. Consistency is the key to success on Instagram, just as with any other social media platform. What you need to understand here though, is that consistency is not the same as posting every single day. If you're here watching this video, chances are you're just starting out and have little experience when it comes to producing content. That means that initially things may take you a little bit longer, whether it's writing captions, creating graphics, or figuring out the right strategies. If you were to post every single day, that would easily lead to burnout. And I'm here to tell you, it it is absolutely not necessary to post so often. What you should commit to at first is a consistent yet sustainable schedule that works for you. If that means you can post once or twice per week, hey, you're making progress anyway and you're learning along the way. And remember, building an online presence is a marathon, not a sprint. Moving on to tip number three, use videos. If you've been struggling to push through with regular posts, you should definitely throw some videos in the mix because they are a gold mine. If you think about it, what can be more engaging to us as humans than a life picture with sound and actual movement other than seeing things happen in real life. That's why videos have the potential to really bring your ideas to life and let your personality shine at the same time. And one of the absolute top strategies for growth at the moment is to use reels, which is no surprise because they can give you massive, massive amounts of reach from non-followers and that's going to be crucial for an early stage growth. No graphics, no photos are going to do that and that's just the reality of social media at the moment, not just Instagram. We're at the stage that videos play a more important role than images and are performing much better overall. And the huge bonus of taking the time to actually learn how to make engaging videos is that they can be easily repurposed, both in a way of atomizing them into smaller chunks if they're longer, or post them straight to other platforms if they're reels. Like they can easily go to TikTok or Pinterest and take off there as well, making you one smart and well-organized creator. So don't sleep on videos. And if you'd like me to record some content around reels, let me know in the comments what you'd like to know specifically. All right, we're gonna try to consider using reels and videos, right? Now let's proceed to tip number four, understand and stick to your niche. Now do your due diligence and check out what's going on in your niche. At the beginning of your journey, you don't have much data to draw from, so you'll have to find a way around it. There are actually a few things that I'd like to point out here. First, you should really study your audience. Take the time to chat to people who engage with your content, even if it's just a handful of people to begin with. Discover what they like, don't like, what problems they have, and what solutions they're looking for. This will help you craft your messaging and more about that later. Secondly, analyze your competitors, although I personally don't like that word. So check out other creators in your niche, much better, and figure out what types of content do exceptionally well for them and get more engagement on average. Read the comments and really try to understand why this kind of content attracts more attention because then you'll be able to replicate that success. And of course, by replicate, I definitely don't mean rip off. It simply means you can get inspired by the formats or how things were done and not copy their posts in any way. And remember that your competitors are not those with big accounts generating a huge amount of traffic from different sources. Instead, look at other accounts with similar number of followers or even a bit bigger than you. Don't think in extremes because a good online presence comes in many shapes and forms, numbers included. And of course, it's important to stick to your niche and make your account revolve around specific subjects aimed at specific people. If you go too wide, too soon, you risk confusing people and we already know what they do when they're confused. They say no. Now, moving on to tip number five, we have the juicy one. Serve your audience with value. I know the phrase provide value is being thrown around like crazy on socials without really explaining what that means. And I want to flip the switch here and ask you what you feel when you value something. I'll give you a second to really think about that and process that. But if I were to ask more people, 
chances are we'd hear something like it's important to me or it's useful to me or I treasure something. And that puts us on the right track here. Providing value in the context of content means one of these two things, either producing content that's helpful to people or content that makes them relate to you so that it builds a connection between you. If we look at the first one, the useful content, it's all about giving your followers knowledge that they can apply in their own life. This can come in so many forms. And again, if you're a yoga instructor, it can be sharing useful tips about progressing with different asanas. If you're running a B&B, you could give them five different ideas on how to spend time in the area, etc., etc. When you really understand your audience, and that's why tip number four is so important, you'll have no shortage of ideas on how you can share valuable information or education to your people and the clue is to make it worthwhile for them to stay on your profile and willing to keep coming back. The second way of understanding value, something that we can treasure, often comes in the form of building relationship. This one is a little trickier at the beginning because when people don't know you, chances are they're not going to instantly feel connected to you. That's why sharing useful content is so important at the beginning. However, it's a subtle art of combining with your personality that's going to really work wonders. When you share knowledge alongside your experiences, it makes it much more personable and cultivates relationships at the same time. And to share value this way you can talk about how you got to where you are, share your behind the scenes, show your struggles and small wins, you can educate with humor, you can talk about your passions and start good conversations. Pretty much as you would when getting to know someone and showing up vulnerably. This makes you relatable and has the potential to make your people feel more connected to you. It can have a real impact on your tribe and become an important part of their social media journey. In terms of more tactical things, what you want to achieve is to keep people on your profile for longer so they can truly benefit from the value you provide and make Instagram happy at the same time. You can do this by writing longer, more detailed captions, you can show up on video because it grabs attention more easily, and share carousel posts because they keep people scrolling for longer. And last but not least, tip number six, prioritize engagement. At the start of your journey, building an engaged community is going to be so much more important than looking at the sheer numbers. Of course, yes, you do want to attract as much traffic as possible, but if that traffic doesn't result in much interaction, it will be quite meaningless, both in terms of building an engaged community and being able to sell on your Instagram if you're a business. Now, the engagement game is like in real life, a reciprocal relationship, which means no refreshing to see if someone finally commented, but rather going at it with an open heart to give, give, give what you want to receive. So first, the obvious bit will be to respond to even the smallest, shortest comments you get. Reply to your story reactions, reply to every DM, talk to people who talk to you, because even if you get one comment, that's one real person who decided to take the few seconds or minutes to engage with you. And that's what bugs me a lot, because I often hear, I want more engagement. But when you go and look at their profile, there are comments left there with no response. And when you're starting out, even a fire emoji that someone left under your post should be worthy of your attention. The one exception here is the bot DM me to collab. You're free to ignore that one or just put it in a bin. Now onto the second level of the engagement game, actively engage with others. As a beginner creator, you should have a chunk of your time set aside to interact with others preferably on a daily basis. I don't mean spending hours doing that every day, but if you can spare at least 15 minutes per day, it is still much better than nothing. The way you do it is to first follow bigger creators in your niche and really engage with their content regularly. And by the way, that's a great opportunity to see what the sentiments are in the comments too. So tip number three, babes. You can also follow smaller accounts and interact with them too. Another great way of finding great content to engage with is to follow hashtags that both your audience may be looking for and hashtags that are used for the professional community of your niche, so the actual creators. This way you'll see the posts in your feed without previously following the creators and you can then widen your network. And if there's one thing I want you to take away from here is this, comment genuinely. I'd like to make an official request here to stop with the great shot comments and the, mm, and the great, I mean, yes, it is engagement, but imagine us talking like this in real life. A friend shows you a great photo that they've taken on vacation or shares a useful tip with you and you say, great, I don't think so. So elaborate in the comments a little bit more. Say what your key takeaway from their caption is. Answer the question they asked. 
share a similar personal experience and tell them why you like the post, not just that you like it. And by all means, react to their stories using the suggested emojis, but then follow up with a sentence or two as well. Again, be the conversation starter rather than waiting for the conversations to happen to you. And now the engagement game has another important component to it, and that's your own audience. We all have these people that always like our posts, leave comments, DM us, or react to our stories. And these are our MVPs, the people who may become the biggest promoters for us because they'll be sharing our stuff with their audience. And these people deserve your engagement too. But that rule doesn't apply to them only, but to any of your active followers. So go ahead and engage with your community yourself too. It's not just about other creators, just your niche, just the big players. It's about your little corner of the internet, your community that you're trying to build. You should really go out of your way to chat to these people, to reciprocate with interactions to their content and build those bonds even at the very early stages of your Instagram journey. And that's exactly the key to Instagram that's so often overlooked. Social media is social. It's about the people, the relationships, the interactions. And what it's not is a spreadsheet of predicted growth, dry calculation and strategies. Yes, Instagram and other platforms are a fantastic tool in our business or creator toolkit, but we cannot forget about the people behind it. And that's what I want to leave you with. Now, I want to ask you specifically, what does valuable content mean to you? Do you have any creators that really provide that value to you? Let me know in the comments and we can spread some love. And while you're at it, you can tell me which of these tips you'll be applying to grow on Instagram. I myself am only at the beginning of my journey on IG and applying all the different tactics I've used for different clients to help them grow. So if you'd like to follow along to see me use these tips in action, take a peek behind the scenes of building a business. And as always, to gain some useful content marketing knowledge, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Natalia Kalinska. And you can always drop me a DM as well just to say hi. And to take action straight away, check out this video next to dive deeper into optimizing your profile and building the perfect bio. Also, to get you going, you can watch this one to get a set of great ideas for Instagram highlights, and a lot of them double down as great stories ideas as well, so I'm sure they'll help you out a ton. Like that video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.